Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwill with the FX Market Insight for the 9th of November. All right, as we roll out of the uh, North American session, the Fed has uh, come and gone, and we now have a uh, reset of that strong hawkish tone from the Fed. Uh, December rate cut definitely on the cards, and uh, you know potentially two or three going into 2019. Now that's given the uh, euro a bit of a shot in the arm. Well, most of the currencies actually have rolled over with the US dollar strength. Now the euro, just just on this while I, before I go through the rest, the European Commission already downgraded the the growth prospects for uh, Italy. Okay, so that had already rolled off about 40, 50 points, and then you get the Fed on top. That's why the euro is a standout, uh, much lower than other currencies. Now, also with the general sentiment yesterday, you would have seen on the market, MyFX Trading Hub, Sterling, Aussie, and Kiwi all all bullish. Well, this strong dollar momentum doesn't propel these into a bearish sentiment, but it does push them sideways. You can see the Aussie, uh, Kiwi and Sterling all sort of struggling, as you'd expect with that strong dollar, dollar tone, but they haven't gone as far as the other currencies because they already had a bit of a bullish technical tone uh, going into that um, meeting. But the rest of the dollar currencies, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, and dollar CAD for that matter, um, and obviously the dollar index all shooting to the top side, reflecting that move in the US dollar, right? So we do have a bullish US dollar to work with. To me, the overriding best opportunity is, is the double whammy, and that's Euro, right? We've got the ECB or the European Commission downgrading Italy's um, prospects, and then also the Fed on top. It's like a, a weak Euro sentiment, strong US sentiment. Uh, Euro to me goes down. I'll, I'll be looking to get short back towards um, around 114 there somewhere, hopefully, or we may just see this thing slip away. All right, so that's the general where the, where the currencies are and why they are, um, why they are where they are, if that makes sense. Now, if you want to just come back and have a look at the general news, if you've got Reuters, the, uh, the best thing to do is just come into the, um, into the main markets page. You can have a look here at the, uh, give you a bit of a rundown of the why the dollar, give you a bit of a rundown on the Fed, I should say, as well. Now, sterling, obviously still impacted by Brexit. That is, is ongoing. As much as they say a deal is close, it can stop at any minute. So we may, I still think we might see sterling down on a couple hundred points on some stupid article put out on the, on the UK Times this weekend. Uh, that's what generally happens every week. Um, and dollar CAD, well, dollar CAD out of the dollar, dollar currencies, it is the one pair that has got really mixed fundamentals, okay? Um, oil's back to 60 bucks a barrel. That supports a stronger dollar CAD. So we've got the strong dollar, but still it's shot up. It doesn't really want to go on with it, unlike um, dollar Swiss and dollar yen, which do look like they want to charge to the top side. All right, so that's where we are. Now, if we just come back to um, uh, the MyFX Trading Hub, I just want to give you a bit of a, an overview here. So as far as the trading conditions at the moment, they are pretty good. I mean, just be aware, Brexit is the underlying... Um, sort of black swan event, I guess you could almost call it. It's like it happening every other day. But now you can sort of focus on what's really going on. And there's been a bit of a reset here of the, uh, the major currency pairs. And what I've talked about is, um, to me, the euro is probably the best opportunity at the moment. It's bearish. As I said, the East European Commission um, giving us negative sentiment on the euro. And we've got the Fed giving us positive sentiment on the US dollar. That, to me, goes down. Um, and it looks like it's uh, going to happen that way. Uh, dollar yen starting into a bullish tone, as it has dollar Swiss. They've really pumped straight back in, and the dollar index all pointing to the top side and should continue that way. What we're looking for now is um, something to give it a bit more of a run. Now, sterling, Aussie, and Kiwi, they're sort of slowly breaking down on the hourlies, but the daily and weekly charts still suggest they are maintain their top side move, so that's why I've got them sideways. But this is where you, what you want to do is we've just had the sentiment from the Fed, right? The Federal Reserve has given us uh, a clear sentiment here on, um, on the dollar and the dollar pairs. That's why we're getting that bullish tone and bearish tone on the euro. Now, what, you need, what we need is a follow through on the data. If we get some data here that goes with that sentiment, the same direction, well, that's when we get really good trading opportunities. The RBA are releasing their um, statement on monetary policy today in uh, just about an hour and a half. Now, to me, their statement from their meeting was actually, to me, all in all hawkish. 
So that doesn't really go in. And if that statement comes through that way, well, then the Aussie is going to be trading sideways, sort of like a bit of a bullish turn on the Aussie and bullish turn on the US dollar. They, they clash and you get a sideways moving currency. The, the, the um, Chinese CPI number will be very important for the Asian session, especially the Aussie and Kiwi, um, which do follow that. Now, that comes about an hour after the RBA. So if we don't get much out of the RBA, then that sets us up for a good opportunity on the, on the Chinese numbers. Now, once again, you've got to connect, connect the dots. We've got strong US dollar sentiment. If we get weak Chinese numbers here, well, then that supports uh, a, a stronger dollar against China and also uh, should see the Aussie and Kiwi roll over as well. And then you come into that uh, European session. The European session is going to be very active. Not only do we have the prelim GDP numbers, we have manufacturing output and a number of other numbers coming out of, um, out of the UK. The, the, the prelim GDP to me is the, is the main number, but we do have um, you know, industrial output, manufacturing output uh, as well. And then that, that runs us into the US session where we do have the PPI numbers, another inflation number. Um, and uh, following that, an hour and a half after that as well, we do have the University of Michigan uh, consumer sentiment numbers there as well. So there's a, there's a bit to look at. Now, that's, that, that concludes the week for us. So this is where the action is going to be uh, today. Asian session, Aussie, uh, the monetary policy. There's also some housing finance numbers coming out, but I haven't put those in the... Um, in the highlighted uh, list of um, releases here because it's, you know, it's, it's one of those numbers that can impact, can impact, but the main overriding thing is the central bank uh, policy statement. Keep an eye on the CPI and obviously the um, UK is going to be pretty lively. But you know what, these, these UK numbers, they are big fundamental numbers, but we do have the Brexit issues at the moment. And I have seen that some reports where the UK Prime Minister Theresa May is, is basically coming out with, extra bits and pieces, so all about the border in Ireland. Um, so that's where we are, guys. But the good thing is, at the moment, we do have clear sentiment on the US dollar. Now, if I just bring you across to the, basically just to finish up with the um, US dollar page, you can see here the, the strong bounce, right, in the US dollar, okay? It was dribbling lower last week. Or, or, or this past week or so, and that's more on the back of the strong move in, in sterling, right, and a little bit of euro with the positive outcome on Brexit. Now we've got US fundamentals kicking in. This should drive it well above 97. Um, I'm a little bit surprised here that the dollar one hasn't moved. I think those, uh, that intervention that we saw from the People's Bank of China uh, last week has really shaken up the market. But CPI numbers today, weak CPI numbers in China, we should see this thing scream to the top side. If those numbers come in strong, well, then it's probably just going to trade sideways. So really good potential there in uh, the offshore dollar one. Uh, US equity markets, well, to me, pretty, pretty flat. We'll see how they go on Friday once the market's had time to digest the Fed. I think they uh, should start coming off. Um, as the prospects for higher interest rates in the, in the, uh, in the US really continues. And that's it for me, guys. There's, um, you know, a good vibe in the market at the moment. As I said, you just got to follow. We've got the sentiment. Now we just need these numbers to match up with that current sentiment. And that's where the nice, easy trades kick into play. So make sure you follow the, uh, the data and uh, follow the trail of momentum. That's what all this is about. All we're looking for is a glimpse. We've got the US momentum. Hopefully the other numbers fall into place and we get some nice, easy trades. And that's it for me, guys. Have a great uh, trade day. I'll see you in the live trade zone. Cheerio.